The following program is a Town of Colony television production of the William K. Sanford Town Library. Welcome to An Open Door on the Arts. My name is Barbara Richer, and I am your host as we travel through the Capital Region meeting the wonderful and often amazing artists that so enrich our lives. We have a return guest today, and a someone new also, which is always wonderful. Our return guest is part, is the founding person <laughs> and violinist of the musicians of Malwick. A most amazing woman she is, as are the musicians. Um, I saw this on their website and thought that it was a very nice way to put it. Uh, the musicians of Malwick are a flexible sized chamber group. Now they are in residence at Schuyler Mansion and Schenectady County Community College. And flexible means that really they um, take away or add in members of their chamber music group as the situation or the program um, uh, demands. And it makes it wonderful and very intimate sometimes and much grander at other times. And um, they're, they're quite amazing. And Anne-Marie Barker Schwartz has made it that way. Welcome, Anne-Marie. Thank you. Now, we do have a second guest also who will be doing um, some performing, yes, mm -hmm. and is the founder of uh, Nakra Dance, Beth Faktu. Is that correct? Facto. 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 I knew I would say it wrong. I, I apologize too. I get those names incorrectly <laughs> sometimes. Um, professional Dance Company has been working since 2008. Yes. Right. And Beth and Anne Marie will be doing uh, a programming together uh, for the first of your next yes, half of your season. Yes, our February. Okay. Yeah. So, we're eager. Now tell us about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Beth and I had a chance to work together last year on a collaborative program with Albany Pro Musica. Mm -hmm. And we really enjoyed working together. It, it was a nice spirit, I think, between mm -hmm. the two of us. And so Beth and I went out for lunch one day and she said, do you ever want to do something with dancers? And I said, oh my gosh, <laughs> <laughs> I certainly do. And it kind of just, it, it blossomed from there. And she had me look at a number of Isadora Duncan-based ideas, your, um, Rose Petals, I think yes. was the name of mm -hmm. one of the pieces, and it was sort of these, these love pieces, and she planted a seed in my head about doing a program near Valentine's Day, sort of with this idea of, of love dances as the core of it. And it expanded from there. Mm -hmm. um, and it, the program actually came into place really pretty easily. I mean, it was almost more a matter of what do we not include instead of yes. what do we include yeah. because there was such a, a wonderful diversity of repertory out there that we could pull upon. And it's not just the joy of love because love is a multifaceted experience. Yes, it is. I was thinking of that <laughs> as you were talking. Love about is painful pain, sometimes. Pain, passionate and loving. And I was thinking, not always, though. It's painful. It's painful and it can be heartbreaking and so we're, we're taking it from all the different angles and there's such amazing music and such a, a wonderful dynamic that you can get by having more than just the acoustic experience mm -hmm. by having the visual experience of course. too of course. and so it's been this very synergistic experience I think working together and designing the program and talking about how how it will actually sort of interface together and um, there's one more component too, which is not just dance and music, but also the spoken word. I did see that, mm -hmm. and I we can certainly mention their name, and you can mention it. But <laughs> okay. I'll have it written down, and I think and they should be mentioned. Um, Byron Nielsen, who's been a longtime friend and collaborator, is mm -hmm. the wordsmith right. <laughs> for this performance, <laughs> and he's sort of crafting not only the words per se, the script, but also sort of the concept how it's going to flow from piece to piece mm -hmm. dramatically. And then Aaron Holbritter, uh, who's director and one of the co-founders of Creative License and also um, works for Beth. So my production okay. coordinator as well. Okay. So he's providing actors. 
and Wonderful. this is going to be a you know a three-way production sort mm -hmm. of and I think that people are going to find it a very first of all enjoyable experience and also a, a meaningful moving experience mm -hmm. it sounded very exciting when I was reading about it and I, I liked that in, um, the addition of the spoken word also and uh, creative license is, is relatively new to the area so it's really a terrific way to um, to see how it all comes together which is very often what it is in love whether it's a good love or a bad love right. Right. you have the the words the music the emotion it's the angst it's all there <laughs> the angst yes all yes. the angst now will this be um, typically you're very classical music oriented yes and, and will it be classical music? it's going to be a combination we have I think a wonderful flow of pieces mm -hmm. that go all the way back to the early Baroque and well into the 20th century including a piece by Libby Larson which she wrote as sort of a love piece to certain types of music mm -hmm. and Libby is our one living composer um, whose music is on the program and so I wrote to her and asked her to write a love letter yeah. and she wrote back and said she would be delighted to. How so nice. That's, that's going lovely. to be incorporated into the program. How nice is that? It's, it's, and I'm it will be excited. read? Will it be read? It will be read. It will be read. Yes. How wonderful. So How wonderful. it should be really fun and I think for the audience they're going to see really the whole spectrum of the love experience through these three artistic media. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. I'm sure. Now um, I, as I said you're a flexible size chamber group so before we just move right over there to Bath which we're going to do in a minute. <laughs> okay. But will we have have three, two, we will, one, we will have 15, five. five, okay. And it's going, we're going to go in and out of all different combinations. Wonderful. So the five components are violin, of course, <laughs> <laughs> flute, guitar, and then we have singers. Oh, so great. it's going to, to go back and forth between all different combinations. Oh, how wonderful. And I think it'll be really nice. Mm -hmm. And that will be part of the, the theatrics of it, too. And it's going to be at the Schenectady kind of Community College. It is yes. on Fe okay. uh, Sunday, February 12th. We're actually doing a run out before the performance at the Community College on Saturday, February 11th at the Cohoes Music Hall. Okay, okay. So there are actually two So they could, to see it. could come to the Cohoes Music Either Hall one. also? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Or 2 p.m. at Schenectady. Connectedy County yes. Community College. Yes. Now, Beth. Okay. okay. <laughs> now it's your turn. Yeah, so I think uh, when I met Anne Marie, she had come to a concert that we had at uh, Skidmore College where we were just doing a full run of Isadora Duncan work, and she mm -hmm. was the founder of Modern Dance. Mm -hmm. So I think I was in that mode at that time when we had our first conversation, and I thought, well, maybe we should base it around Isadora Duncan's love letters. But then we thought, people really don't know a lot about modern dance choreographers, and we thought, well, maybe that wouldn't really, audience wouldn't understand that without some and knowledge. And that's kind of one of your missions when it you found is. it was to, as exactly. I read anyway, to re-educate right. all of us in terms of modern dance. Right. And then we thought, well, what about the composer's love lives? And maybe we should explore that. So mm -hmm. um, that was kind of where we took it um, from. And then she presented me with some music selections. And of course, with dance, you know, some music selections are more danceable than others. Mm -hmm. So I chose the ones that I thought would be best for movement sake. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we have now the playwright, or the wordsmith, um, <laughs> <laughs> who has written a script. And so for me, it's gone from some of the pieces will be reactionary to the music, some will be reactionary to his words that his he has readings. chosen. And then just yesterday, I got the staging from um, Aaron Holbreder from Creative License that has now given me more material to work with, where, what he's envisioning the dancer should be doing when we're not actually reacting to the music. Um, so it's it's an interesting you know um, play on everything. everything and a true collaboration. So you know anything with the collaboration, the more you start working with each other and sharing ideas, the more it's morphing. And so it's really morphed so much in the last forty eight hours <laughs> since we got that staging. It just for keeps us. growing and right. growing. It has, and, and now I have all these visions <laughs> in my mind. And and I'm also drawing on the dancers too to give me their input. Yes. On the movement, so it's not just me dictating, especially with um, some of the staging that Aaron Holbreder has incorporated now. 
uh, where he says, you know, I just want three three dancers um, moving around like ghost figures during the one thing. And so mm -hmm. I thought, well, why don't I just see what they want to create first and see where that can take it and make it really organic. Mm -hmm. um, I know originally we th I thought I was going to have boxes and people on boxes, and that has gone <laughs> no boxes. Really out of the window. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The like that's not work. That's not even where we're taking it. Um, and at Coho's Music Hall, we have the ability to do it on different levels, mm -hmm. right. which is nice. Yeah, it's really when nice when you're staging something right. up, like a piece of theater, almost. Right. So for for me, I have to keep that in the back of my mind that when we transition from Coho's to Schenectady County Community College, that it has to be able to adapt either right. on one level or the three. And I think mm -hmm. so far we're doing a good job with that. So I'm really excited. Well, to it sounds too like it, it really is. A lot of it is about adaptability. I think sometimes when you have a, a dance group, you're very familiar with everyone's physical being, emotional being, you know, and you might find, you might say, no, we really need her for this piece or we need him for that piece. But, but when you start kind of by not knowing, mm -hmm. it's really tricky to figure out how you're going to do that all. Right. So there's new challenges for, for well, for both of you, really. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And, and there, I mean, it's the whole idea of how you make it sort of come together seamlessly. So the music flows into the dance, and then the going from piece to piece needs to be part of the drama and the you know whole thea theatricality of right. the mm -hmm. of the right. concert. Right. And so it's there are challenges, but it's wonderful, and yeah. it's, I think the artistic quality comes across and how these things flow together. Beautiful. And we have all ages Beautiful. of dancers too. I, you know, I have somebody that's 18 and then somebody who's in their 50s. I'm dancing as well, which I wasn't until last week. <laughs> um, um, so you would be the 18 year old? <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> My new haircut. Yeah, that's right. right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so now I'm excited about that because we figured, you know, all women, and we do have two men, which is very exciting too, but everybody experiences love at different ages, at different you yes. know, intensities. Yes. And so to bring that, like the first one with the Purcell, um, you know, I haven't talked to Aaron about this yet. I mean, he gave me his staging, but I had something else in mind. But I thought we should leave the main figure you know, on stage Which in the beginning. Dido, we're doing the, right. the very famous aria where she takes her life at the end uh, of Dido and Aeneas. Yes, and right. talk about yes. heartbreak. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's such a beautiful, that's beautiful piece. the ultimate yes. heartbreak. It is. And right. that's how you're beginning the show? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yes. They'll be weeping. Yes, yeah. and so... You'll um, have a long ways to bring them back from that one. Well, it, but we're trying to do the whole arc. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's me and another uh, woman, you know, we're older dancers, but, uh, you know, c kind of comforting her coming mm -hmm. from having experience of heartbreak mm -hmm. and then having other dancers just meandering mm -hmm. through. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where we're taking that one. And, and then you've got the Rondo, Mozart's Rondo, which is more playful, which I yeah. have sprites basically um, positioning them and as mannequins. And then they, they, they all of a sudden see each other again and they go through this movement. Very nice. And, that's a, and they're a married couple and he, they both dance. Mm -hmm. And so they're new to the scene, which is really exciting. Mm -hmm. And so I'm excited to include them in that. That's very And they can practice at home. I said, this is perfect. That's <laughs> right. here, here are your movements now. Go home until you get it right. Right, right, right. There you go. Don't you wish. <laughs> now, I do want you to also tell our audience, because um, it was on your website, I think, Nakra. I thought, hmm, what an interesting name, but I have no idea what that means. Right. So People always think, what, is, what does each that letter mean? stand for something? Yes. Um, and I thought about doing that if I did an arts and education program, but I haven't gone there yet. <laughs> but um, when I was, you know, I, I was at the Museum of Dance for years, and that's where I fell in love with the history of, mm -hmm. of dance and how mm -hmm. our youth, they don't, they don't understand where anything comes from that they're learning, um, which is why I started NACRA. And when I was trying to find a name, um, I thought, well, mother of pearl is strength, resilience, and luster. And those are all qualities that I thought a dancer has. And that's where I came up with the name Nakra. Because that means mother of pearl? Mother of pearl, yeah. Ah, and is that a language? Name. It is a beautiful name. It's Tahitian. Name. Yeah. Pardon me? Tahitian? Tahitian. Yeah. Prince for mother Polynesian. of pearl. Mm -hmm. Wow, very nice. Mm -hmm. Very, very nice. So do you, uh, would you say that most of the dance with the music that, that we're having here is uh, is an Isidore Duncan modern dance thing, or or have no. you pulled, have you extended your wings a little to to accommodate a vast I, array of music? It sounds right. Like. It is a vast. I mean, array. It, it very really big is. Of music. Originally, I thought, oh, should I just have one style? But I really couldn't. 
can, I couldn't find that. Right. I, it really is in reaction to the music mm -hmm. and and I, I am trying to find a common uh, movement theme that you'll see in every, or a shape that people can um, relate to from each component right. of it. Um, now we're into the costuming end of it. That's a challenge, what I'm, what I'm gonna do with that. Right. But for movement, I, you know, it's more of an eclectic blend. Okay. And also, you know, who I, who I have for each piece and what mm -hmm. their strengths are, I like to play to that as well. And having this young man now, who I didn't have in the beginning, and being able to really do things with him, which is really extraordinary. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah nice. so the rondo has taken a lot of different forms from, because mm -hmm. I videotape every rehearsal and I go look at it and I change everything. I come back <laughs> and it's gonna change again. Like, yes, <laughs> it is. Um, so to see that actually morph too, as they've gotten used to it. Well, I think that's something wonderful that happens when you collaborate like the two of you do. And Anne-Marie is, is amazing. I just find her stunningly amazing. There are so many different things that she is excellent at mm -hmm. and has an, if it, we just stuck with music, has an ear f for. And you can range into so many kinds of music. Every, I've not seen one of your productions that's just the same as the one before, just the same as the one that's coming up. You, you really embrace the to totality of, uh, that's of, one of music my, that can be done in your my mm -hmm. One of my joys is researching the music and also figuring out how things can go together. I spend a, a lot of time thinking if I put piece A as my centerpiece and then what's mm -hmm. going to go around it. Mm -hmm. And it's really fun, actually, to, to see it come together and figure out, does it really work? Does this add to the energy of the last piece, mm -hmm. or do I need to re rethink this? Mm -hmm. And it's very much like what Beth is doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you keep going back and revisiting it and go, oh, right. if I do this, right. this will right. yes. a you're whole doing different response. instruments. Right. Mentation, and you're doing it with, with folks, mm -hmm. with real folks. Right. I mean, because you, you, you can be on stage with a violin and, and a guitar, and it's just the most moving afternoon you'll spend, you know, or you can add five other instruments to it and it and be equally as enthralled and involved and, well, so and it's, it's a really whole different reaction yes i think one of the things that i've enjoyed watching with my audiences is that as we add other components than just the music to see their reaction and to see how differently they mm -hmm. respond when they have other stimuli when it's right. not just your ears but there's a visual component sure. and it's very you know some of the diehard chamber music lovers take a little while to, to get over like I, I couldn't concentrate on the music because I was watching. <laughs> there was too much stuff going on over right. there. Right, <laughs> and I find, found that a very curious response instead of saying oh how does this whole package go together they're trying to sort of separate the two components instead of seeing the big picture and then others are completely taken with it and it's, it's just very interesting for me to see how people respond. Do you find that your um, musicians or yourself, they love are you, it. But, uh, uh, do you love it or are you like distressed Mm -hmm. by the uh, you have to make a point of not being distracted when you play and I think in a real performance situation you're very focused on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Certainly in rehearsal it's very easy to just be transfixed right. by what the dancers <laughs> are doing and like oh yeah I need to come in now. <laughs> but it's really, we really enjoy the collaborations. We enjoy there, there really is this energy that two groups coming together have that isn't quite there with just one group. There's just I don't know, there's just mm -hmm. excitement and, and it's really Really nice. When you think of, of the music that will accompany this now, mm -hmm. this this one that that we're doing, that we're going to come and see Bach, Schumann, Mozart. I know, or some of the people. Right. 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 Okay. Um, would they have in their time have had other accompaniments like dancers or um, vocal overtones to any of their uh, it, music? If you were talking about the specific pieces that we're doing, probably with the exception of the Dido and Aeneas, um, the personal piece, no, these were really meant to be concert mm -hmm. pieces. But that's not to say that in those compo in those genres of music, I mean, certainly dance was always going on, and right. Mozart wrote ballet music for his operas, mm -hmm. and certainly there was ballet going on during Schumann's mm -hmm. lifetime. Um, and I mean, I think it's fair to say that they, I don't think they would have reacted badly to it. And certainly the salons in, in Paris, mm -hmm. for example, Probably during the were, 1800s were multifaceted were that way with things. all kinds right. of things. Mm -hmm. right. 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 So I don't think what we're doing in any way invalidates the music. It's just a different way of experiencing it. 
it wasn't so much getting at it in validating the music as I was getting at the fact that you've probably invented a whole new way of hearing <laughs> this music. <laughs> well, you know, I think also that someone like Balanchine really made such, oh. you know, inroads into that because he wasn't looking at, okay, Tchaikovsky, Nutcracker, Swan Lake. He took any piece that he responded to viscerally and, and put said it. And so did Isadora yeah. Duncan. Right. Right. So, so musical. Right. The it, movement is Good musical. points. And good it points. didn't come from a piece that was specifically written to be danced to, mm -hmm. but it's certainly still a piece that's danceable. Right. Amazing. Yeah. And Amazing. I think to, in today's times, too, you know, older audiences, I hate to say it, but they can go to a concert and just focus on the music. But now with the young today, right. they, they need all the stimuli, they need all of this That's a good point. That's an interesting point. Um, and I don't know if that's good or bad. I always, I struggle right. with that. Right. Right. Um, but, but it's, it's a, an but it's interesting a point. Right. Yes. And it's odd that that's the point because so much of the time you see them so focused on one screen, True. you know, and one yeah. thing. True. And so you wonder mm -hmm. if they're catching what's happening. That, it's really hard to say. I, I will know. say I think that when we do things with dancers, we see a younger audience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's a definite. Yes. <laughs> and that's so. a plus, too. Yeah. Oh, we absolutely. We want to keep them involved mm -hmm. and keep them coming. Well, and we're, we're hoping that you know, not only will they enjoy the dance, but that they'll respond to the music and maybe perhaps get interested in a purely musical concert as well. Mm -hmm. Right, absolutely. I would, I would hope so. Right. And the best dancers are very musical. Absolutely. You mm -hmm. have to be musical. Right. You know? I know Anne-Marie, probably, I don't know whether our audience know, but Anne-Marie Barker-Schwartz is a, an amazing dancer yes. also. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't seen her. I'm going to have her put that you, violin down. I'm going to put her in one of those. It's going to be a surprise. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> not to her musicians of Malwick. You may not see her in this particular <laughs> happening, but she's a very good dancer. I will be able to pick up the violin at that point. That would <laughs> yeah. not be That's good. That's when Byron will take over. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> We that will not switch, be good. Right, well, right, right. So absolutely. I'll, I'll speaking. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is going to be amazing and something for every everyone. Um, uh, on, tell me the time at the Cajos Music Hall. I trying. To, I, I think it's seven thirty yeah. Saturday. I believe seven thirty February eleventh at the Cajos Music Hall, and Sunday February twelfth at. Um, the Schenectady County Community College, and the title of it is Suite of Love. Suite of Love, S-U-I-T-E, Suite of Love. <laughs> uh, it, it promises to be wonderful, uh, really quite nice. I'm going to just, I don't, I'm not quite sure how much time we have, okay. but I did want to at least um, mention a couple your other next two concerts sure. coming too. Okay. I mean, I'd love to have you come back and talk more in depth about them, Certainly. but um, we want to give them something to look for. Also, at the end of this, you'll see the rolling credits, and at the bottom will be the website for Knocker Dance and for the Musicians of Malwick, and all of the um, times and dates and everything will be right there and how to become supporters and a little bit more about the three qualities of the pearl that um, make this name so special. Um, but right now, May 5th, so we have, um, so we have May 7th, actually. May 7th, May 7th, yeah. Skylar Mansion. Skylar Mansion. The ship's yes. captain. Yes. Mm. 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. Yes, we always <laughs> do two performances because we sell out. And but we won't have any dancing here. No, not in the Skyler Mansion. They would okay. be hard-pressed to find a space to dance. That's true. That's true. Um, it's an 1817 instrumental arrangement of a vaudeville. Mm. And it's really very cute and delightful music. And we'll have some other things on the program as well, but that's okay. the big centerpiece of the programming. And then a very elegant gourmet picnic dinner on the grounds of the Skyler Mansion afterwards. So nice. we're very excited about that. Mm. And in between, because it's two performances, one at three, one at five. Yes. And still in between, there is a we have reception. a nice wine and cheese reception, and, and so it is. it's it's part of the afternoon. It's included in the ticket price, so you can either stay after the first performance or come early oh, for the first. second one. Well, and as somebody that has taken advantage of that grand offering, it's wonderful. It's just a wonderful way to 
be able to get to know the musicians a bit better, to uh, talk a little bit about what they've just heard, and uh, it's it's grand. It's a very nice thing to be able to go to that reception, and the meal is uh, always wonderful. Fantastic. And somebody new, I think, Healthy Cafe Catering. Because this is going to be right on the grounds. Healthy Cafe mm. Catering is making a beautiful picnic dinner for us, and it's it's really more than a picnic. I'm just calling it a picnic right. because it's outside. It'll be beautiful. It's going to be It'll very It'll be nice. beautiful, and we may talk about that again, but that's on um, May, 7th. May 7th from uh, 3 and 5, two shows. And then your last performance of this season. Yes, we're very excited about this. Um, Friday, June 9th, and the big piece on the program is um, this Hebraic fantasy mm. of... Um, is Samuel Gardner, who Samuel Gardner was a very famous violinist at the beginning of the last century. And his grandson is on our board. His oh, my goodness, how wonderful. His grandson is Eric Wiener. And Eric talked to me about his grandfather's music, which I didn't know anything about. And we did some research, and it's all archived at Yale. Wow. And we found this piece, and Eric really wanted to have it performed. It's a great piece. Samuel Gardner is the first person to win a Pulitzer Prize in music in 1918 for his mm. first string quartet. So a fine composer. Wonderful. And we'll be doing that along with um, the Schumann Piano Quintet. And Teddy Arm is our violin guest artist, and he's just an amazing player. He plays with Chamber Music Society of Lincoln Center. Mm. He's a delightful, My delightful goodness. man. I just love him, and it's going to be a really nice program. And it will take place at the First Reformed Church in Schenectady yes. at uh, 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Yes. I've gotten the sign from our uh, wonderful gentleman who's taping this for us. We're down to about one minute, I think. Um, I hope you'll come back maybe and talk about a little Certainly. bit more about the next two, at least particularly the last one. I am so glad you brought this person with you. How could I not? <laughs> you brought Beth. You brought Beth and you explained you. not. Uh, and uh, it'll be so exciting to so see exciting. you and your whole company dancing and you playing. It'll be beautiful. It's I'm, going to be very nice. It's going to be very romance. special. Yes. So um, keep that romance alive. February's coming. Bring your lovey here and enjoy, <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Thank you.